Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. Today we're going to talk about importing images into Lightroom. The import dialog box in Lightroom has a lot on it and it can be a bit confusing. So we're going to go over some of those settings and talk about how you could import images into Lightroom. Now, on my computer I have a CF card already plugged in. I took a few images this morning when I woke up and we're going to go to Lightroom. Now if you're in the library module of Lightroom, the import button is over here on the left. Uh, the keyboard shortcut for that is Shift Command I on a Mac, Shift Control I on a PC. Whenever you do that, you'll get this import dialog. Now if your import dialog box does not look like this one, you may be using the minimized version. Over here in the left hand corner, you'll see there's a little square button with a triangle in it. If I click on that, I'll get this minimized version. Um, personally, I never use this, but if you consistently import images to the same location on your computer all the time with the same settings, you may prefer using this kind of simplified condensed version. Personally, I don't, and in this video, we're gonna go over this larger version. You can see, I just click on this little square with a triangle in it again to get that maximized version. Now, sometimes, and it's been happening often over the last several Lightroom updates, it doesn't automatically go to the folder where the images are on, in my case, a CF card. Doesn't matter if it's an SD card or whatever kind of memory card it is, or even if you have your camera plugged into your computer, it hasn't been finding that folder. Uh, if it doesn't, you go over here on the left-hand side and you could just click on the folder. It's in this uh, Nikon Z7 II uh, CF card. and right there. So there are the images. Now, if you don't have a CF card or an, uh, any type of memory card or, or camera plugged into your computer, you just have them on your images on an external hard drive or they're in a specific folder of your computer, you could go up to the top here and click this little uh, fly out menu and you could go to uh, some favorite places like the desktop, your pictures folder, movies folder, go to other source and you could then kind of find your images wherever they are. Just go to that folder there. You also, below that, could kind of drill down to your images are. So if I had them on an external hard drive, I could go to that uh, drive directly. I could go to the local hard drive and so on. So I could do all that over here just to find my images. I think most of us, though, import images directly from the camera or from the memory card. So that's when you'll just have to click on the folder that contains those images. Now, right by default, every image will have a little check mark in the corner. That means those are images that will be importing. If you happen to accidentally have hit maybe your shutter button and you have a blank or blurry image and you don't want to import that image, just click on the little box to remove the check mark and you won't import that specific image. Now across the top you have some settings. You could copy these images from my memory card as DNG. So as Lightroom is copying them, they'll convert them to DNG files. Personally, I don't convert my uh, Nikon or Sony, that's the two cameras I'm currently using, Sony cameras and Nikon cameras. I don't convert those to DNG. I just copy them as is, as their native raw files. So I use the copy command. This way they'll stay on the memory card. So if I have a problem with the import or Lightroom or tomorrow Lightroom crashes, at least I still have them on the memory card. You could do move and it will actually then basically copy them off the memory card, then delete them from the memory card. I don't use move and you could use add if you prefer. Now add you probably wouldn't use for a memory card, but if you have images on, let's say, an external hard drive in a specific folder and you want them to stay on that external hard drive in that folder, use add and then it will leave them where they are. It will just add them to Lightroom. So that's, you know, a, a setting that I often use if I have images somewhere on my system and I don't want to move them. But most often I'll use copy. Now down here you could either copy all photos, just new photos. So if you have a lot of different images on a memory card and you just want to, you know, import the new ones, you would click new. 
of course, these are all new images. Or you could uh, sort them by destination folders. And you could see up here, there's only one um, specific folder from today where I took these images. So typically, I always leave that on all photos, even if I have old folders there. Because over here on the right, there is a option for don't import suspected duplicates. That way, if I did have older folders on the memory card and I had already imported them, if I check this box, they'll just get grayed out in this middle part uh, of the viewer and they won't be imported. Now, throughout file handling, you have uh, options for previews. You could build the minimal previews, which are really small. They won't take up a lot of hard space. Embedded in Sidecar, they'll take the embedded um, preview that is in the raw file and make a sidecar kind of, um, um, I guess, preview for it that'll be in the Lightroom catalog that takes up just a little more space than the minimal. Standard previews take up a little more space and one-to-one -one previews are large and they'll take up the most space. Uh, the advantage of using a larger preview is you'll get a better rendition of the image when you're viewing it either in the film strip at the bottom or in the viewer in the middle. Uh, colors will be a little more true. Um, it may take just maybe slightly longer to load. It depends on your system. Uh, typically, I'll just use uh, standard previews. You also have the option to build smart previews. You would want to use smart previews when you have your images on an external hard drive. Typically, if you have them on the external hard drive and you're using any of the other previews, minimal, embedded, and sidecar, standard, or one-to-one, -one, uh, you won't be able to edit those images unless that hard drive is plugged in and active on the system. But if you build smart previews, you'll be able to edit the images even if that hard drive is not active on your system. Don't import suspected duplicates we talked about. Now you can make a second copy. So as you're copying them to a specific location on your system, you could copy a second copy somewhere else as a backup. Uh, add to a collection. Collections in Lightroom, often people, or often I will personally, like to add them to a collection as I go, but this one I'm not going to. Now, do you want to do any file renaming? Personally, I always leave the original camera file names, but you can rename them. There's different templates. So there's custom names, custom name with the original file number, custom name or a sequence will go like whatever custom name, let's say you're using, you know, outside. It'll be outside dash one, outside dash two, and so on. So you have all these presets you could do there, or templates, they call them. You can put your custom text here if you want to, uh, your start number. So if you're using a custom name, dash one, dash two, what do you want it to start at one? Uh, extensions leave as is. Now I don't rename files, so I will uh, keep that checked off and we could even minimize that box. By the way, if you're not seeing all these options over here on the right, just right click near any of them. See so like file naming and you could see that they all have check marks next to them. If I, since I never use file renaming, if I remove the check mark, it disappears. So if you're missing any of these, right click near one that's already there, like apply during import. And I could then put that check mark uh, uh, again next to file renaming and it will reappear. So it's there. Apply during import. Do you want to add a develop preset? These are presets. So if you want to add a preset to the image as you're importing it, you could do that here. Metadata presets. I've covered this in su uh, numerous videos. This, for me, I have a preset that adds my copyright info, my address, um, a website uh, URL that talks about my copyright and what rights I give uh, if you know someone wants to use my image which I don't give any, uh, keywords. You could add keywords to your images as you uh, import them. I really, this is one of those do as I say, not as I do. I really encourage everyone to use keywords because it will help you search and find images later. I am horrible. I never add keywords, but you know, you probably should. <laughs> Destination. Now this is the kind of hairy part. Where are we going to put these things? Now I have all my images on an external hard drive that I've called Lightroom, all right? So I named it Lightroom. Don't let that confuse you. And you don't need to have your external hard drive called Lightroom, all right? It could be called anything you like. And 
I have a folder on that external hard drive called Lightroom RAW Files. Again, I gave it that name. Don't let it confuse you. Your folder doesn't have to be called Lightroom RAW Files. You could have it on a hard drive called hard drive number one, and you could have it in a folder called My Photos or something like that. So it doesn't matter. So that is the master folder that contains all the other folders of my images. And I break my images down by location. So you could see that I have um, abstract images. That's a type of image, but I have Akron Falls, Allegheny State Park, Allentown Art Festival, and so on. So I have them pretty much by location. Now this, these uh, set of images were taken on the Buffalo River, and I do have a location Buffalo River. And when I click on that, you'll see that down here, it's kind of grayed out, will be today's date, March 14th, 2021. And it has 23 images. That's what we have, and it has a check mark next to it. That's because if we go back up to the top, I have them going into the folder I click on by date. And it's going to create a folder inside of that Buffalo River folder with the name 2021-03-14. That's the date format I like to use because it sorts them in time order. So the earliest ones are at the top, the latter ones are at the bottom. So that's why I use that. So you can see now we go down here, you can see there's uh, from 2017 a few, there's 2018, see how they're in order? That's why I like to use that date format. So they'll be put in the Buffalo River folder inside of a folder called uh, 2021-03-14. And all of that is inside of the master folder, Lightroom RAW Files. And Lightroom RAW Files is on the external hard drive I called Lightroom. So hopefully that made sense. Now, these um, master kind of folders are the folders that are directly under Lightroom RAW Files. What if I wanted to create a whole new one? What I would do is I would click on Lightroom RAW Files. Then I would go up here into subfolder and let's call the, just call this test folder. Now you'll see inside of Lightroom RAW Files, if I go down to T's, we'll see test folder is there and inside a test folder is that date. So that's how I could create a whole new location and put in images. Now, obviously I don't want to do that here. I don't want to do a subfolder. I just want to do them by date and I want the date inside of Buffalo River right there. Okay, now I have them going into that folder. Um, I'm not going to use any develop presets. I'm going to put that import preset, which basically my copyright info in there. There's not going to be any keywords. They're not going into a subfolder inside of another folder. They're going inside of that Buffalo River folder as I indicated. Now along the bottom, we have some controls for what we're seeing here, like the thumbnails, if you want to make them bigger, you can move the slider right, left, stuff like that. You also could check all, uncheck all, you know, you want to do that. If you want to uh, view one specific one, like if I want to view that one, I could just click here and see that image, right? Go back to the view of all of them. That's what I like to do. You could go to a custom sort by like capture time, which is what they are defaulted as. Uh, check state, uh, they're all checked. File name, it's pretty not gonna move because everything's there, they're all raw files. So, so pretty much nothing's gonna move here. Uh, for the sort, uh, you could flip them around from the oldest to the newest, the newest to the oldest by clicking there. That at the very bottom too, you have this thing that still allows you to put an import preset uh, on it. Um, so we, we, you know, right now it's saying, you know, save current settings as new preset, restore default presets. This is just the settings I have for the overall import dialog box. So um, right now as it's set, I have it coming from this memory card. I have them all checked. I have them going into this specific folder. If I want to save that as a preset, I could do that here, but I'm always putting them in different folders. And um, sometimes I'm creating new folders. So that is not something that I would ever do down here. So uh, right now we're ready and we could click import. Uh, you could click done and it will save the settings for use next time. All right, and it does that anyway if you click import. So if you're not ready to import yet, you, but you don't want to go through this whole rigmarole again of clicking on this folder, clicking on copy, 
uh, going, you know, whatever you checked over here, going into your folder, just click done. And then when you bring the import dialog box back again, it will still have those settings, except you still got to click. I think that's a bug over here. Got to click on that folder, but then you'll see it's, it's automatically putting it in where I want it to go and everything like that. So we'll click import and I'll show you one more thing. As it imports the folder, it doesn't actually bring you to the folder where the images are. It brings you to the top in the catalog tab, current import. So we're actually not in the folder where these images reside. And the problem with this is if you want to try to custom order anything, so if I go, well, I like this one, but I want it first, you'll get, you can't custom order anything when you're in the previous import catalog at the top. You have to actually go down to the actual folder. Then I could come in and I could take like this last image and put it like second, like that. So I could do custom ordering now. All right, so I just wanted to make that, let everyone know, because I do get that question sometimes, uh, people telling me they can't reorder their images. That's why. The import dialog doesn't put you in the folder. It puts you up in this catalog previous import. All right, so that's hopefully everything you need to know on the import dialog in Lightroom. Hopefully that will help you more effectively import images into your Lightroom. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.